What yeah, is he's it? He's like, hey, you doing anything tonight? Yeah, Rick D. Pietro? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, yeah I think we'll he come. likes what he's doing right now. I don't think he wants to come back to I'm just saying. Suit up. <laughs> but Lou Lamorello, does he, or uh, right now, definitive answer, does he or does he not bring back John Tavares? Uh, I think he absolutely does. He has to. He has to, yeah. He has to. I think, yeah, I think it's not like they're going to fire him if he doesn't. He's already a better GM what? than Garth Snow ever was. And ever will be. Yeah. <laughs> if, if Let's put it this way. Like I said, Lou Lamoureux, what was the first thing that he did? Even before he was the Islanders GM. He, he went to Toronto oh. and he talked to John Tavares. And he, and he let him... I'm sure he laid out the entire blueprint that, all right, this is what we're going to do. This is where we're going to go. Yes, we know we need a goalie. We, need, we know we need to shore up the defense. We're going to get you some help. Because, let's face it, the Islanders had Tavares, Barzal, I love this kid, but they need guys who can play both ways. And especially when you're talking about second and third line kind of players, yeah, the Islanders scored a bunch of goals last year because all they did was play offense. There was no defense on that team. So it, it, it's, it's rare in the NHL these days, but if you could score four goals a game, that's great. But if you're giving up six, what difference does it make? Yeah. <laughs> That was the problem last year. Now, like I said, I'm sure Lamarillo had a long sit down with Tavares. Tavares wants to stay on Long Island. He, he's not looking to go to Toronto like all the all the writers were writing at the All Star Game for the last couple of years. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want that spotlight. So, what's the where's the perfect place to play if you if you don't crave the spotlight? Long Island. He doesn't have to worry about that. There, there's like, what, two guys that cover that team on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just exist. He gets his money. He's happy. He just plays hockey. That's all he has to worry about until he goes to the All-Star game. And now all of a sudden he's got 100 guys all asking him, well, you know, what's your next step? What are you going to do? You know, why, why Long Island? It's fine for him. That's what he likes. So Lamorello, I, I'm convinced, will make it work. Now, by the way, I just wanted to mention Barry Trotz is not the first Stanley Cup coach to not return to the team the next year. Not by a long shot. No. And it's not to say it's a large number of people, but he's not the first. Five. Scotty Bowman. Twice. In 79. Scotty. Scotty Bowman leaves Montre- uh, Montreal and mm-hmm. becomes Buffalo Mike GM. Mike Keenan was another one. Scotty Bowman in 2002. That's when he retired. Leaves Detroit and retires. Okay. I forgot who was the other one, too. Bob Johnson in 91. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Another Badger one. Bob. Leaves Pittsburgh. Yes, because he's was, I was, wasn't illness. Health? Yeah, it was health related illness. Mike Keenan in 1994 leaves the New York Rangers to become the St. Louis Blues head coach. Why? Why would especially with like the players he had at the time? Him and Neil Smith did not get along. Yeah, he and Neil Smith didn't get along, and then to be the coach and the GM, which means that he got paid. I don't understand why why Mike Keenan would leave Mark Messier. Well, Mark Messier at that point was was getting old. He's still Mark Messier. True, but like I said, I'm sure. And I, well, I uh, I'll say I'm sure we could verify this, but I am fairly sure that that Mike Keenan doubled his salary with that move. You're talking about a Stanley Cup winning coach, a, a franchise like the St. Louis Blues back then were a mess. So. What are they going to do? Here, 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 Mike Keenan, here's a big check. You just want a Stanley Cup. Bring some of that magic to us. And, and, then, they, and, like, and then they found out he wasn't a magician. Like, Mike Keenan, you've just won the Super Bowl. Where are you going? Yeah. I'm not going to Disneyland. I'm St. going Louis. to St. Louis. I'm, I'm going, I'm going to, to the hill. <laughs> I'm going to the middle of nowhere. I'm going. I'm going, I'm going to the arch. Now, speaking <laughs> of Stanley Cup and Super Bowls, the Philadelphia Eagles receive the ugliest rings I've ever seen. Uh, sorry, the Philadelphia Eagles selected. Nope, they got their Stanley Cup. Wait a second. No, they got the Super Bowl championship trophy rings the other day. I haven't seen them. They're ugly. They very have ugly. an ugly green uh, color. I was going to say, they, they have to be green. So that's It's that's, very, that's, very, that's, very ugly, in my that's, opinion. That's a bad start. And they, what's it called? An inscription in there is the uh, dog pound. The dog mask from uh, really because they were the big yeah, underdogs. Do- isn't the dog pound the Browns? Yeah, uh, I, yeah I, I, I meant to, to say, say yeah. the, the, the the dog mask. Now uh, they wow. did do um, a, a knock, and this is what teams t- teams do nowadays. You know, last year we had uh, New England do two hundred eighty three diamonds. Right. Philadelphia did. Um, there's a certain spot that has a number of diamonds uh, that equal the Philly special. The jerseys of the three players that were part of the Philly special. 
Um, yeah, that just it, it just goes to show you that not only are championship tra- uh, rings getting bigger and blingier and fla- uh, flashier, they actually have a meaning. But they, they also describe what you went through. And you know, they have meanings and they have their insanely like bad English quote on there. Right. We are what we are, and we like it's just like come on, like you guys clearly did not go to college, and if you did, you clearly did not go to class. So the NCAA should be investigating all the schools that all of you went to. <laughs> But it's just going to show, like, nowadays, it's throwing subtle shots and actually not so subtle shots at the teams you just beat. Right. Like, when did... What what happened? Why is sports no longer... Okay, we won the championship, so let's take pride in our championship. Let's not then throw dirt on the team we just beat. Yeah, it's, there's... It's mostly because of the fans, there, there's certain There's certainly a lack of class in, like, the, you in don't that even, ring. You don't even see that in the... You don't see that in NBA anymore. Uh, in NBA, you don't even see that in NBA. In baseball, mm-hmm. you would... I don't know. There might be a big 23 on the Golden State ring this year because <laughs> they knocked off LeBron in four If anything, there would be J.R. Smith. I was going to say. What was it number, or that, number yeah, five? Yeah, no. J.R. Smith, Smith was number five, that. I think. J.R. Smith like five diamonds will the probably they might get... do that, actually. You don't know. He might get his own ring this year. Uh, rumor <laughs> has it, like he's getting the biggest one of them all. Uh, like the, it's actually going to say MVP inscribed on the inside of it. The, war- the Warriors fans would vote if they give him one. I know that. Look, Warriors fans, they definitely have fifty thousand. The ring will probably cost fifty thousand dollars. It's going to be an expensive ring. They probably have fifty thousand fans that'll be each willing to donate one dollar. <laughs> And have Jarrah Smith just a, get a, or, get or a or ring. Even whoever yeah. was at the game one, if they, they just can, donate like three dollars, you'll probably get not the even three dollars. They can do one dollar from every yeah. fan, and the team can chip in two do, two thousand. KD make himself would probably three chip and in. give the rest to charity. Yeah, whatever. You, they can <laughs> they can have fans donate one, two, three dollars. They can make the ring. They don't even need to give it to Jr. Although he probably accept it. They can just you know put it <laughs> in like their trophy case room and just show that I would that I would appreciate and love. That kind of shade, that would be hysterical. <laughs> they keep it in like their trophy box at, at the Oracle or whatever. And they give tours arena. for twenty years. Yeah, and they're like right. and, and this is J.R. Smith ring, he's allowed to come and pick it up whenever he wants, but he, <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't come yet. What's it called? <laughs> it, it, aliens come to Earth in the year twenty ninety seven and they land in uh the new you know, arena that seven the Warriors have like their seventh years? arena from now because okay. that's just the way sports is going. Baseball, you got a new stadium like every fifteen years. If, if aliens live in uh, land in Oakland, they're in trouble. Yeah, they land in <laughs> Oakland and they they walk into to the Oracle or whatever they, they're going to call it by then. You know, because it's probably going to be like the GoDaddy.com forum or something right. like that. <laughs> and they walk into the trophy room and the first thing they see is this massive ring with dust on. Wow, J.R. Smith <laughs> won the MVP for the Golden State. Oh, no, sorry, he played. Wait, let's Google it. Oh yeah, Jared Smith played for the. Cl- How did what what? Did- oh, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I see what you did there. I have to go to history books for that one. Julio Jones has roughly three years, uh, three years, excuse me, roughly thirty-five million dollars left on his contract with the Atlanta Falcons. Although it's only partially guaranteed when you add the t- this year and next year's guarantees for seven point two million dollars. He is holding out. Wow. He wants a new contract. He wants guaranteed. He wants a lot of guaranteed money, and you know what? He kind of deserves it. If you saw the way he played for Atlanta since he's been drafted by Atlanta, and they saved his career by trading up with the Browns, because had he been taken by the Browns, a whole another story, because that's just, you know, anyone who goes to the Browns until this year, when you have <laughs> this year's insane wide receiver tanning. But Julio Jones, he's holding out. He wants the money. Show him the green. He earned it, people. He earned it. Show him the money. He so rightfully deserves and, and, and earned. Unfortunately, this is doing something that happens a lot nowadays, especially in a sport like football, where you only have partially guaranteed. You have players who want more. Team doesn't want to give it to them. It's their best player. All of a sudden, you have this rift between best player and management, and it just does not work well. It does not work out well. Uh, in a good note, I guess you can call it. There are certain times where it sort of does work out well. Odell Beckham Jr. did not, you know, he's not as great of a player as Julio Jones, in my opinion, and hopefully in all of yours as well. He was, you know, supposed to hold out. He will be reporting to camp. He will not be holding out for a brand new contract. He's in the final year. He will probably get tagged if they don't uh, sign a new contract. He will actually definitely get tagged, mm-hmm. and then he'll be tagged again, a la Kirk Cousins. Tom Brady says retirement is coming sooner rather than later. Apparently, TB12 is not as good as we all thought it was. I don't know. I guess I'm going to call. I'm going to call up Giselle and say, "Hey, I I want my money back." 
If TB12 is deciding he's going to retire, I want out of this retire. I want out of this this health junk. I, I, I give me the candy, bring on the sugar, and I don't mean Giselle. And you know, give me my money back. Big Ben, Ben Roethlisberger, the man known allegedly for doing some of the most disgusting, inhumane acts of life, said something profound and something I actually agree with for the first time in my entire life. He said, Super Bowl wins are better than a big contract. Now, if only Carmelo Anthony understood that. <laughs> oh, if only Carmelo Anthony. Only a Anthony. lot of athletes understood yeah, that. Exactly. Oh, where, oh, where has Carmelo Anthony gone? Oh, where, oh, where could he be? Oh, sorry about that. I was just, <laughs> I was daydreaming. Oklahoma City. Yeah. If only Carmelo Anthony understood. NBA Finals that's, are better that's, than that's, money. That's, that's where money. That's where money gets you these days. Oklahoma City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Aaron, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers has a 99 overall rating on Madden this year. TB12 has a 97. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers hurt last year too. Was out for eight weeks, nine weeks. That's Tom Brady crazy. took his team to back-to-back Super Bowls. Now, I didn't win this one. So anybody has 98? <laughs> there is no, there are 98s. But Tom oh. Brady, uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Aaron Donald, um, I believe two other players are 99. Now, by the way, J.J. Uh, Watt usually is 99. Now, he's not this year because he was injured again. Too many injuries. And they decided that, you know what? We're not going to let him start at 99. Well, he can work Watt, his way out. Like, frenzy is over pretty much because he hasn't been in the spotlight anymore. So. Yeah, but like he's still a great player. <clears throat> yeah, but does Aaron Rodgers deserve a 99? And this is not, I know this is video games. So this is more like a Nerdvana type thing. But does Aaron Rodgers deserve 99 while Tom Brady gets a 97? I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go if, with yes. If Tom Brady doesn't get a 99, mm, I don't think anybody Probably can. no. Tell me, tell me when does Tom Brady throw a pass with more than 20 yards? What? what? Twice a game, pretty much at yeah, the end of the half. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> he, he might, he well, might, don't forget. He might, he might get 20-yard completions, because we're talking no, yards no, I mean, after yeah, no, no, I know, I know what you meant. I'm, like, I'm t- I say every, at every, the end of the quarter, end of the half, he might air one out just to try yeah, and get it, but, but every, that's about every, it. Everything he throws is, is six yeah. yards, eight yards, you know, just quick, it's a quick hits. <laughs> and Aaron Rodgers, he throws the ball downfield. Aaron Rodgers is, is, and, is and, his and Aaron best Rodgers play. Can, can run. Yeah. I trust Aaron Rodgers more with a Hail Mary than I trust Jerry's Familia getting a save at the end of a game. But that's my, that's my <laughs> point. Is, is that Aaron Rodgers does everything a quarterback should do. Tom Brady, while I'm not saying in any way that he's not a great quarterback, because obviously he is, but his game is more limited than Aaron Rodgers. He can't scramble. He's not going to. He he very rarely throws the long ball, and and that's a product of of age. what he has as, as receivers <laughs> as much as it is his age and as much as it is also his, his offensive line. But do I do I do I think that Aaron Rodgers deserves a better rating as as a quarterback strictly as a quarterback? Never mind the team. Never mind the other factors. I think Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback. Well, by the way, you mentioned Tom Brady in twenty yards. You know, he was so used to for for a long period of time throwing slant routes to his favorite wide receiver, to, uh, Wes, Welker. Wes Welker, for so long, right. and then it was only then did he actually get Aaron Hernandez and, and Rob oh, Gronkowski. Rob. He got these two hulking physical specimens that would. One would block and beat the living daylights out of the defender, and the other tight end would sneak around and then catch the pass. Right. It was only then where he actually started throwing the ball a little farther downfield. But that that's that's what I'm saying. Everything with, with Brady is three-step drop, quick throw, and, and it infuriates me because nobody else does well, his it. His throws aren't as quick anymore thanks to that uh, nice thumb he got. Right. But... It, you, you look at teams that say, well, we're going to play West Coast offense. Well, that's what the, that's what the Patriots do. That's the real West Coast offense, is quick hits, and if your receiver breaks a tackle, now your, your six- or seven-yard pass just turned into a 30-yard pass. Yeah. So when the Giants say, we're going to play West Coast offense, first of all, they're lying. But because they're looking they, for a 10, 15-yard pass. But they never, because because they never, did, they never yeah. did it that way. And, that, and that's, the way, that's the way the 49ers did it when Montana yeah. and, and Young were, were the quarterback. It was the same kind of offense. And it's so easy to run. I don't know why more teams don't do it like that. Yeah. Because they should. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the NBA Draft Preview.
for the home stretch here on 90.3 WHBC. My name is Andrew Zucker, and alongside me, Karen Bonaguru, Kyle McKay, special guest Tim Leonard. We want to thank so much for coming in. Stay tuned Absolutely. for the German Hit Parade. It's been fun. We'll see you guys next week. Peace out. Okay. Yo. Tell your friends.